afternoon and welcome to Tortable Church for our Chris Dingle service. It's lovely to uh, see you all here uh, today. Just to say that when it comes to the nativity that's going on, there are a number of uh, carols or just individual verses and things and carols that are happening during the play. Please do join in and sing along uh, with them. Everything you need uh, for today is uh, up on screen. And so we start our service with our opening carol, Come and Sing the Christmas Story. We stand to sing together. This is the story of the birth of Jesus. He's not an ordinary baby, not at all. In fact, nothing about him is ordinary. More than 2,000 years ago, in the Holy Land, people were very sad because their country was ruled by the Romans. People hated being ruled by the Romans. They wanted God to send them a king to set them free.
and Joseph lived in Nazareth. They were engaged to be married. An angel called Gabriel visited Mary. Meeting an angel was very scary. It certainly changed everything. You are going to have a baby, the angel told Mary. He will be called Jesus. He will be the one that everyone is waiting for, the promised king. One day, the Roman Empire decided to count everyone to find out how much money they had. He ordered everyone to go to their place of birth. Mary and Joseph had to ta travel to the town of Bethlehem to be counted. Nobody wanted to travel. Everybody was grumpy, and Mary was tired. Even the donkey was tired. After all, he was carrying two people. Mary and Joseph and lots of other travellers had arrived in their town home of Bethlehem for census. There weren't enough rooms for any or everybody. What were Mary and Joseph to do? My wife is having a baby, Joseph begged. Isn't there a bit of room for us? Mary and Joseph were so tired, they could have slept almost anywhere. At last, someone said, I have a stable for you. It's not very clean, but it's warm and dry. You'll be able to lie down with the animals. But then there was something else. The baby was coming. Bethlehem, there were shepherds looking after their sheep. An angel appeared. It was a quiet night when another angel appeared, and then the whole night sky was lit up with angels singing and praising God for the, new, for the birth of the newborn king.
to see him, the shepherd said. Without leaving anyone to guard their sheep, off they went down the hillsides toward the, towards the lights of Bethlehem. The shepherds did not expect to see the new king in a stable with sheep and cows, but they knew this would be no ordinary baby. He was their new king, <coughs> the one they had been wait, waiting for. <laughs> Hundreds of miles away, wise men saw a special star in the sky. That means a new king, they said excitedly. They saddled their camels and left right away. What do you give a new king as a present? The wise men packed some very unusual gifts. One king carried a gift of gold for the baby. He thought, money is always useful. One king carried a gift of frankincense for the baby. What would a new king want with holy smoke? One king carried a gift of myrrh for the baby. This was an ointment put on very sick people. Very odd indeed. went to the palace. That's where you go to meet a newborn king. King Herod was surprised to hear who the wise men were looking for. A new king, he said. I'd love to meet him. King Herod was a bad king and he wasn't to be trusted. He did not want Jesus to be king and wanted to get rid of the baby. If you find the baby, let me know, he said to the wise men. The star led the wise men towards Bethlehem and where, there they found the baby Jesus and presented their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. In a dream, an angel told the wise men not to go back to Herod. Where were you born? I bet it wasn't in a stable. That's where Jesus was born, with smelly animals all around him. The shepherds were poor and smelt a bit. The wise men were rich and important. It doesn't matter. 
All that matters is they came to see Jesus. They wanted to say, you are my king, and thank him for coming. Let's all remember to do that on Christmas Day. super organising things require our various narrators and all our people at the front. Thank you for being part of this. Um, if anyone's got cameras and wants to take any pictures of any little ones or they're slightly bigger little ones as well, then now's the chance. You've got about one minute and then we're going to get everyone to go to a back to change. So if you want to grab a photo quickly, now's a chance. You can come out the fine, fine, take a photo of so Can you just be responsible about how you post it? If you're going to post things.
my in my mic working? Yeah. Great. I, I noticed that, that that gap has got smaller since the last time I was here. <laughs> um, as this is my first Christmas and Chris Dingle at Tortable as the Methodist minister here, um, I'm going to go through the Chris Dingle just to make sure that you do know what they are before you do. And so I'll go through that and then next year I don't know what I'll be saying or the year after that. But the first time I speak at any Chris Dingle in a place, we go through the Chris Dingles and we decide um, what fits, what represents, whatever, and, that, and what we, it means for us. But first of all, let me ask you, what do you think is my least favourite question at this time of year? Any Are you busy? Are you busy? Possibly that one. <laughs> my least favourite of all questions is, are you ready for Christmas? Because the answer is, I'm ready for Christmas when I get home on Christmas Day after the Christmas morning service. That's when I'm ready for Christmas. <laughs> I'm never ready. I'm always chasing around. I think Mark's even, definitely even busier than I am. I mean, this is one of six services Mark's doing today, I think. <laughs> I've only got four, so what am I doing? Um, <laughs> and one of my other questions that I, I don't particularly hate it, but I think is really strange, is to say to a, uh, a minister of any description, what are you doing for Christmas? <laughs> I, are you going anywhere nice for Christmas? Well, I am. Guernsey's nice. But the idea that I might go away for Christmas, I don't know it's where they... It's a good idea, <laughs> It is a good idea. So let's just check you know what these things are all about. By the way, what, before I forget to say, I also really enjoyed uh, looking at all the kids in the dressing up and everything else. The one, you shouldn't pick on one person, but the one I particularly was impressed by was the Angel Gabriel. Where's the Angel Gabriel? Because you had to have your arms in the air for ages, didn't you? <laughs> And I was watching you and their arms were, oh. <laughs> Because if we did it, we would have put our arms down much quicker. So well done for keeping your arms up all the way through the bit about Mary and stuff. So well done. Excellent. So what do we have here? Um, don't tell me it's a Chris Dingle, I know that. What, what do we have? Just break it down into the different bits that you know we have. Right at the back. It's an orange and it represents the world. Excellent. So that's for those of us who think the world is round. For those who think it's flat, I don't know what you do for a Chris Dingle, but, <laughs> but generally speaking, we all think the world is round, don't we? Okay. I'll come back to that later on. What, what's, what else do we have in the, on this Chris Dingle? Yep. The band of red is the blood that um, Jesus shed for us. Thank you. So the band of red represents Jesus' blood. So even while it's Christmas, or nearly Christmas, we're already thinking about Easter, aren't we? Because Jesus came, as we know, to be the saviour, but also part of the whole thing was Easter. So Easter, if you haven't got Easter, you haven't got Christmas, you haven't got Christmas, you haven't got Easter. It's all part of the whole uh, church year, isn't it? So thank you for that. What else have we got? What else have we got on here that you, you know from memory, if you can't see it even? What, what else do we have on this? We have a, say it again, I think you're right. We have the candle, don't we? And what does the candle represent? Pardon? <laughs> yeah, right at the back again. The light of Jesus. Thank you. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. What else do we have on here now? <laughs> Who said sweeties? <laughs> okay, what are, the, <laughs> what are the sweets on? I think. What are they, what, what are they on? Cocktail sticks. What do the cocktail sticks represent? How many are there? Four. So you have you can choose, yeah. Well, they, they can either be the four seasons, yeah, or they can be the four gospels. Some people say Matthew, Mark, Luke, and whatever the other one is. John, yes. Yeah. Um, and what is on? We've had it. What is on the cocktail sticks? Sweets. What do you think they represent? Something to do while you're, <laughs> while you're looking? What, what do you think they represent? Any, any ideas? What do the sweets represent on the... Reverend Charlie, what do you think it means? All the good things God gives us. Thank you. All the good... Am I, is it taking too long, this talk? Are you trying to... <laughs> like, oh, I thought you were rushing us through. All the good... <laughs> all the great things that God does for us, and we remember those things by eating the sweets and all the great things God does. Now, if we want to see a candle in its, all its glory... I mean, we have got candles around the place already. What do you really need in order to see the candle better, would you say? What do you think you need to see this candle really well? Darkness. 
Is that what you're going to say? Darkness. I know that's... A, oh. Darkness. Light. Exactly, yeah. You, it needs to be dark and light the candle, doesn't it? Right? Because... Because obviously Jesus is the light of the world, but actually one of the great things about Christmas is we remember that the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. And the light shines, where? In the darkness. Uh, and the, the darkness can't put it out. Now, I googled this question, so I don't know what the right answer is. How far away do you think you can be from a candle flame and see it? Has anyone googled that recently? <laughs> what? <laughs> What do you think is an answer? I mean, I don't know what the right answer is, but you give me an answer, you think, how far away? A long way. Thank you, a long way. I think that's probably the nearest answer we're gonna get. Some people reckon 30 miles, no way. No way, because the Earth starts curving away at that point, doesn't it? But imagine, imagine you were in a perfect environment, so direct line of sight, so there was nothing in the way, and also no light pollution, because as we were talking about, you need darkness to see the light best. Now, in, and apparently, science, scientists have done experiments to say we could probably see it about 1.6 miles away. Now, I don't know where that is from here. So, I had a, a, my Google Maps on my laptop with my ruler, and I looked where it was 1.6 miles away, and I think it's approximately, but you're going to tell me if it's not, approximately where the ferry ring is from here, in a straight line, roughly, okay? So, imagine this light, candle, you're that far away, but obviously you can't see it from there because it's down there. But if it was a straight line, you could just about make it out in the perfect conditions. Is that true? I don't know. I really don't know. But hopefully, as if by magic, fairly soon, what's going to happen is all these candles will be lit, in, carefully, safely, and the other lights will go up. Is that what happened? Yes. And we're going to sing away in a manger. It's going to be absolutely magical. Like it was for my parents when I was about six. And I'd learned the words for Away in a Manger. And about four in the morning, I went into their bedroom and I sang Away in a Manger. It was so sweet. Aww. Well, I thought it was going to be sweet, but I got told to go back to bed. So, um, <laughs> but that's fine. It's not that early in the morning. So we're going to sing Away in a Manger. And all the lovely candles will be lit. They'll be beautiful. So uh, what we need to do is have all the children come up first. So we make sure you've got a Christingle. And then whatever's left over, which will be low, hopefully enough, We'll pass them around so everybody's got a Chris Dingle. Is that, is that right? Yes. Yeah. So, children, come, in, come down the front, come and grab a Chris Dingle.
keep the lights down for now. And so I'd like to pray a prayer with the Christingle as a way of thinking about it. So can I invite you to touch the orange? Generous God, how glorious is your name in all the world. We give thanks for the earth, our home. If you touch the red ribbon, we give thanks for Jesus who died on a cross to show your great love for us all. If you touch the first of your sticks, we give thanks for the seasons with their many gifts and fruits to eat. Second stick. We give thanks for this beautiful island, for countryside and coast for us to enjoy. And touch a third stick. We give thanks for night and day, a time for rest and sleep, and a time for work and play. And finally, touch your fourth stick. We give thanks for people so wonderfully different, yet each created in your image. And now a candle. We give thanks for Jesus, our Saviour, at whose birth in Bethlehem a star lit up the sky. And finally, don't touch it, but point to your flame. Christ is our light, the light that shines in the darkness. Amen. And on screen, see the words of the Lord's Prayer. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Can I invite you now to blow out your candles, and I think we'll have the lights back up.
let's ask God's blessing on this uh, gifts for the charity reaper. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for our service today, for the chance to join together and for a chance to give and support the Wigwam Charity. We pray that this money would go and be of use to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the final prayer of blessing. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of a Christ child be yours this Christmas tide, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you.